Hi guys, it's Aaliyah. Thanks for joining me again today on what I'm pretty sure is Thursday. I uh, don't remember what day of the week it is anymore. I do know that it has been a full 35 days of living in leggings and yoga pants. So uh, welcome to quarantine life. I also think my dog is in this room somewhere. So if you hear a random bark during this video, that's what's going on. Um, haven't seen her in about an hour or so, so kind of hard to say. But um, today we are talking about how to take care of the skin around your eyes. And, you know, my clients always have three primary concerns about their eye tissue. There's the dark circles and puffiness concern. There is the concern about wrinkles and then um, you know, skin texture, which is my skin is feeling dry or it kind of has like a crepey appearance to it. So the thing that we have to remember when we're talking about, you know, eye tissue is that your eye tissue is the most delicate skin on your entire body. So it requires really special care. A couple of rules that I have to live by um, just in general when taking care of your eyes. And number one, always remove your makeup using an oil-based product. Most eye makeup is made of, uh, you know, most eye makeup is oil-based in general, so oil is what breaks down oil, and a lot of times if you're using a water-based product, you're really having a tug at that tissue, uh, which damages collagen elastin, which brings me to rule number two, don't tug at the skin around your eyes. Um, let me backpedal a second. If you have um, lash extensions, for the love of all that is good, don't use an oil-based eye makeup remover. Um, talk to your lash artist, and they can probably recommend something for you. Um, although most of the time they're going to tell you, you know, don't put mascara on lash extensions, but I digress. So, um, you know, don't tug at your skin when you're taking off or putting on your makeup. Again, that tissue is very delicate. That collagen elastin breaks very easily and can contribute to wrinkling. Um, and then the third thing is when you're trying to address these various issues with your skin, you need to identify what concerns you have and you really need to choose your products accordingly. Um, no one product I've found out there treats all eye issues really well. Sometimes you'll do better with like a serum or a mask or a gel. Sometimes you'll do better with an eye cream and sometimes depending on the issues you might need both. So let's dive into the first concern that a lot of clients have which is dark circles. So dark circles are either gonna be caused by a pigment issue um, or what we call vasodilation. So if you're dealing with pigment, um, this is something usually that I see in more olive or darker skin tones. You don't see it in fair skin very often. Um, and again, you know, that tissue is very delicate. Pigment is a protective response for the body. So if you're experiencing damage around the eyes, you're more likely to have pigment, you know, around here. And then sometimes even like on the upper lid area. Um, so again, not the common issue. I would say that most of the time when people are talking about the dark circles that they see around their eyes, they're talking about vasodilation. So vasodilation, um, in short, is dilation of your blood vessels, right? So your eyes are an organ. Your organs get nourished with blood. When your eyes get uh, fatigued, and this can be, you know, at the end of the day, I've been staring at a computer all day, and sometimes it's just, you know, eyes doing their thing, your body is gonna send blood to that area in order to nourish the organ. So around this area here, let me pull up my glasses. So, you know, kind of above this orbital bone right there, you'll see um, what we call blood pooling, which is what leads to that like darkness and puffiness. So a lot of the times this is why you see those dark circles most when you're really tired or when you're dealing with eye fatigue or if you're a little hungover. So what ingredients are gonna deal with the pigment? What ingredients are gonna deal with the vasodilation? So for pigment, um, my top three ingredients for around the eye area, I love licorice root. Licorice root is a great anti-inflammatory. It also is a tyrosinase inhibitor, so it inhibits the enzyme that um, you know puts melanin into our skin cells, so you don't end up with as much of you know pigment transfer. Um, and again, you know, just great general anti-inflammatory antioxidant. Um, arbutin is another really great ingredient for pigment around the eye area. Arbutin is a derivative of hydroquinone. Um, hydroquinone is probably the most common skin lightening ingredient that's out there. Um, it's a little controversial um, and you do have some, you know, drawbacks to it that we'll talk about when we talk about just skin pigment in general, which is coming up. 
Um, but Arbutin, it gives you the similar benefits of hydroquinone without as much irritation and without as much um, associated risk. So again, um, it's a melanogenesis inhibitor in short. And then lastly for pigment, I love kojic acid. Kojic acid is a derivative from mushrooms. Um, it is also a tyrosinase inhibitor, so it inhibits the transfer of uh, melanin pigment into the cells. And again, um, being, being the type of ingredient is, it's relatively gentle for around the eye area. So, you know, I will say that pigment, realistically, I'm seeing that in maybe 20% of my clients. The other 80% when they're talking about their dark circles, they're talking about a vasodilation issue. So uh, top two ingredients for that are going to be caffeine, which is probably the most commonly used ingredient in um, eye creams for dark circles, which I cre uh, caffeine constricts the blood vessels. So again, if the issue is my blood vessels are dilated because you know I'm sending blood to that area, caffeine does the opposite and it constricts them, limiting blood flow to that area. Um, and then we also have acetyl tetrapeptide two. So this is a branded peptide. It goes by the brand name Beautify, and it is really great for repairing tissue and reducing blood flow to that area. So, you know, dark circles and puffiness to me kind of go hand in hand. Eye puffiness a lot of the times is a result of just buildup of fluid in general around the eye area. Now that can be blood, that can be lymphatic fluid, that can be, um, you know, from your sinuses. That just causes like a general puffiness in that area. So when we're trying to reduce puffiness, we're looking at reducing inflammation that causes the puffiness. So. Um, that's going to be, you know, your anti-inflammatories. So vitamin C, you know, we talked about vitamin C yesterday. We have L-ascorbic acid and tetrahexadecal ascorbate. Um, those are your two lipid-soluble forms of vitamin C. We also have ascorbyl glucoside. Now, ascorbyl glucoside um, is a water-based version. It's relatively stable. I personally prefer that around the eye area than I do the lipid-soluble versions just because it's a little bit more gentle. Again, um, not everyone responds well to stronger ingredients around the eye, and a lot of the times um, with certain ingredients, if they're too strong, you end up with what's called um, contact dermatitis, which is like almost like a little rash, red bumps, or dry peeling skin around the eye area, which let's face it, nobody wants that. The nice thing about vitamin C is that you get a double benefit from it as a skin brightener. So if you are dealing with like a pigment issue, it can help alleviate some of that. Uh, another great anti-inflammatory we have is Avena Sativa. This is also known as oat extract commonly. Um, it's great for just calming the skin, repairing the barrier. If you have people that deal with um, skin sensitivity a lot, you know, whether it's eczema or just chronic barrier damage, chronic dry skin, oat extract is great. And then uh, Camellia Japonica, which is green tea extract. It's a really straight, um, strong anti-inflammatory. It's a great antioxidant. And it's also a vasoconstrictor. So those are my top anti-inflammatory ingredients. So next biggest issue that I get a lot is, you know, what do I do about wrinkles? So wrinkles form when the collagen and elastin fibers in our dermis break down from wear and tear. So I want you to think about your skin like a, like a house, basically. And uh, your dermis is like the foundation of the house. And it has these collagen elastin fibers that are basically like this woven together holding that house up. And they're designed to kind of stretch and give from movement. But what happens is over time, those fibers, um, it's like a rubber band. You know, if you stretch a rubber band over and over and over and over, eventually the rubber band's gonna break, right? Well, the fibers on our skin do the same thing. Um, collagen actually starts to degrade as early in um, as our 20s. So ingredients that stimulate collagen growth are gonna be crucial, not only for protecting the eye area, but just for um, minimizing the production of wrinkles in general. Um, again, you know, your eye tissue is so thin that usually this is the first place that we start to see um, the collagen elastin break down. Um, and then again, you know, when that collagen elastin breaks down, it makes your eye tissue even thinner, which makes the dark circle problem even more apparent. So um, what ingredients are gonna be good for building up collagen around my eye? So uh, first up, we have vitamin A derivatives. This is gonna be your retinol. It also goes by the name retinol palmitate. Um, you know, these ingredients stimulate a high production of cells. We call that cell proliferation. 
and it also stimulates the production of collagen. Um, the downside is vitamin A derivatives, they have a kind of naturally drying effect to them, which can cause a lot of irritation, especially if you're not acclimated to using a vitamin A. Uh, next, we have things that fall into kind of our like protein category. So this is going to be uh, your peptides, and I've got a couple of them listed up here. There are a lot of different peptides in skincare that stimulate collagen. We also have arginine, um, and again, proteins are so important because your skin builds connective tissue from proteins. Proteins are basically like the little building blocks in our body. Um, so without protein, I can't build new collagen. Next up, we have collagen in and of itself. So when you use collagen topically, it's not like getting an injection of collagen. It's not gonna plump you up the way a filler does. What happens when you use collagen um, superficially is that your skin senses that protein on the surface and it stimulates the production of new collagen from sensing that protein there. Now, the ingredient that I'm kind of most intrigued by, and again, this is kind of a newer ingredient, you're not seeing a lot of skincare companies use it right now, is uh, Hydrolyzed Row. It goes by the brand name Aquabutene XL, and it's actually derived from the water of red caviar hatcheries. So like, um, you guys believe it's red salmon egg hatcheries. Um, that water around it is just really protein rich and so it gives a similar effect of vitamin A without the irritation. You know, it helps produce new cells, it helps stimulate collagen, but it doesn't have the, the drying effect that vitamin A derivatives normally have. So the next issue that comes up a lot is skin texture. Um, so texture can be a lot of things. Texture can be, um, you know, wrinkling, it can be dead skin buildup, it can be dryness, it can be crepiness. Usually I find that those last two issues are related to the oil levels in my skin. So um, the, just the moisture levels in general, and that's, you know, kind of a combination of oil and water. The thing we have to be careful about when we are choosing the oils that we're going to use for around the eye area is you want to make sure you're using something that has uh, zero commodogenesis to it, meaning it is not pore clogging. Um, and that is because the eye area is really prone to a condition that we call milia. So if you've ever seen what looks like little white pimples um, or little white pearls under the skin, and they're usually like in this area and around here and sometimes right in through here and they just never come to a head, they never pop, sometimes they can be there for months at a time, you probably have milia. So this condition forms, um, and you'll just kind of bear with me, think about your follicles like little cups, right? Um, or almost like a balloon. And the opening to your follicle might be really small at the surface and it might be wider, you know, down throughout the actual follicle itself. And so we have dead skin that lines all the way in through here. That skin is designed to naturally kind of exfoliate itself off. In this area, because the follicle opening is so tiny, what ends up happening is that dead skin just kind of builds up and builds up and builds up, and then it forms this little like pearl-like mass. It's actually a type of a cyst uh, that gets stuck in there. So if you're using an oil that is um, commodogenic, you know, our skin is glued together by oil. Um, and certain oils, it becomes a very sticky glue. So using a commodogenic oil can actually exacerbate that condition because you're, you're really sticking that mass together and just making it harder for it to come out. Um, so my top non-commodogenic oils for using around the eye area, first of all, shea butter. Shea butter is great because it gives really good hydration. Um, it has an anti-inflammatory benefit. It's great for uh, rebuilding just the skin barrier in general. Um, I also love jojoba oil. Jojoba is great because it has an almost identical molecular structure to um, our own sebum or the oil that our skin produces. Um, so you get really good absorption and again, zero commodogenesis. Next up, uh, we have squalane. Now, one of the lipids that makes up our skin is called squalene. It's S-Q-U-A-L-E-N-E. -E. And we start to lose a lot of that after age 30. The downside to squalene is in its natural form, it's very unstable. So it oxidizes at the surface of our skin and it loses a lot of its benefits. Um, and you know, we talked yesterday about 
how oxidative stress is bad for our skin. So we want to avoid anything that's going to oxidize very quickly. So that's where squalane comes into play. Squalane is squalene that has undergone what's called the hydrogenation process. That makes it non-commodogenic, it stabilizes it, it becomes anti-inflammatory, and it actually promotes the new cell growth. So squalane good, squalene bad in your, in your uh, skincare products. So those three things that we talked about are emollients or lipids or oils or fats, whatever you want to call them, um, that are going to address, you know, the missing oil component from your skin, which can happen a lot around the eye area. And then we also have hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid, a lot of times when we're seeing the synthetic version of it that's in skincare, we're seeing it as sodium hyaluronate. It's in every, um, the the hyaluronic acid is in every cell in the human body. It's a natural humectant and it actually binds water to your skin very well. So I want you to think of your skin like a grape. And I'm going to use this analogy a lot, so get used to it. Um, your skin is like a grape. When it gets dehydrated, when it's missing water, it shrivels up into raisin mode. So you think of a raisin, it's wrinkly at the surface, it's kind of dull, it doesn't reflect light very well, it's kind of shriveled up. So when we put water or hydration into our skin, we're turning that raisin back into a grape. It becomes plump. We smooth out some of those wrinkles. So we get, um, you know, better light reflection. So almost every, every skin type, whether you're oily, dry, combination, acne, rosacea, you need hydration. Um, and again, that's something we'll talk about in another video later on. But sodium hyaluronate, it plumps the skin by attracting water to the surface of the skin, um, which can also help with the way your skin might feel if you're dealing with dehydration. So with all that to say, what are my top products for the eye area? I have two things that I'm kind of in love with right now. Um, the first one is by Asian Labs, and this is their Hydrogel Eye Patches. Guys, these are a miracle in a patch. Um, it contains astaxanthin, which we talked about yesterday, um, a really powerful antioxidant that's anywhere from 1,000 to 6,000 times more powerful than uh, vitamin C. It has vitamin E and green tea in it for the antioxidant benefit. We have caffeine as a vasoconstrictor. We have shea butter, sodium hyaluronate, and ceramides, which will all condition the surface of your skin. And then we also have licorice, rose water, and allantoin, which calm the skin. So that is going to be something that you can use them, you know, daily if you want. They're like a little patch. You stick them on there for, you know, up to 20 minutes, peel them off, and you're good to go. You'll get an instant gratification benefit from it. Um, if you're looking for more of a cream, I really like uh, the Rester C brand right now. So they're revitalizing eye cream. Um, and this is great, too, if you have sensitive eyes. Rester C is a dermatology-grade brand. You're only going to find them in medical offices. This eye cream, it has um, a lot of shea butter in it. It has the ascorbyl glucoside, the water-soluble version of vitamin C. It has sodium hyaluronate in it um, to you know, get a, give a good plumping effect if you're dehydrated. And then it also has that hydrolyzed row that we talked about that um, will help with new cell and new collagen production without the associated irritation that you might get from a vitamin A derivative. Um, it has a great texture, you know, repairs fine lines and wrinkles. The one thing I will say about it is it's not the best for, um, you know, dark circles. It doesn't have a strong vasoconstrictor component to it. So if you're dealing more with wrinkles, go more of the Rester C Revitalizing Eye Cream. If you're dealing more with dark circles, go uh, with the ASEAN Labs Hydrogel Eye Patches. And if you want to do both, you can, you know, maybe you use the Rester C in the morning and then uh, use the ASEAN Labs patches at night. Or you can do rest or see, you know, morning and night and then do the ASEAN Labs patches a couple of times a week like you would a sheet mask just to get that added benefit. Um, if I had to choose between the two, I would go with the ASEAN Labs eye patches because those things are amazing. So that's all I have for you today. Um, if you have any other questions about, you know, how to take care of the skin around your eyes, you're looking for a custom consult or you have any additional questions, hop on over to beautytap.com slash members slash askalia and you can shoot me a personal message there. Uh, you can find both the ASEAN Lab Patches and the Rester C Revitalizing Cream on beautytap.com. Um, and then, you know, if you're interested in anything, make sure you're following me and shoot me a message beforehand because I have some great promo codes that gives my followers some freebies to try. So 
Thanks again, everyone, and we will see you tomorrow.